refugees who cannot now go back to Hungary, to North Korea, to North Vietnam, to East Germany, or to Poland, or to any of the other lands from which a steady stream of refugees poured forth in eloquent testimony to the cruel oppression now holding sway in their homeland. Originally, my family's from uh, Prague, Czechoslovakia, and when uh, the invasion of uh, Czechoslovakia happened, uh, we were on holidays in Italy. So that was me, three, uh, two sisters and one brother, and my mother and father. So we heard some information on the radio, and one of my early recollections was uh, of us huddling together around this little radio with other Czechs that were also camping and, and traveling around Italy, trying to get the latest news. My father rang uh, a relative great aunt in Czechoslovakia in Prague and uh, she said to him, well basically I'm just looking out the window as we speak and I've just seen a protester run over by a tank. And it was that point that my father decided he's not going back. We have this fantastic photo of us arriving in Australia after a 36 hour flight. It was at Sydney airport, it was taken by a local newspaper and that was uh, literally we got off the plane because there's a big hoo-ha us coming from like we were political immigrants. That's me on the bottom left hand corner, okay, just got off there not really knowing what was happening. Uh, what you see there is the clothes on our back and in the cargo was the actual tent and that's all we came with to Australia. My real name is, I, uh, most people don't know, is Vratislav Kasparek. Vratislav is my first name, Kasparek is my last name. No one really wanted to sort of try and pronounce that name or the short version of Vratia. And I remember having tennis uh, coach lessons and the, the tennis coach, when I said to him what my name was, he said, mate, I'm not calling you that. Mate, I'll call you Fred. And that's how I got my name Fred. And what's interesting about that was that literally by adopting that name that everyone could remember and say, I had so many more friends because they felt comfortable. Not that people were mean, that they felt comfortable able to pronounce your name. What has Australia given me? I, it has given me everything. It's given me my wife, it's given me my children, it's given me my father and mother-in-law. Uh, it's given me a lifestyle that I, could, I never could have uh, dreamt about anywhere else. What uh, I've contributed to the community through my architecture is affordable housing. The sector at, where semi-professionals can't quite afford to afford their house, they can actually afford to buy one. It's giving them good design, good construction and a place where they can enjoy their life. Refugees are an important part of the Australian culture because it's like a a good meal, it's, uh, the recipe is made up of a number of different ingredients and each one adds its spice, the, the sweet, sour and so forth to bring up a good meal at the end of it and you need that diversity to create a healthy meal and something you can really enjoy.